had to tell people 10 times today the same thing about stopping with their computer analysis. Like somebody played a game, Jesse, and right after this game that they lost, interesting game, I think Kosti over, overheard this moment too. Uh-huh. They come into chat and they say, man, I got to study that game and like learn something from it. And I was like, great, this guy's going places. And 10 seconds later, he's like, so apparently I'm supposed to this, this, this. And I'm like, uh, 10 <laughs> seconds later, you've been using a computer. He's like, yeah, like that's not analyzing your game. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, you know, David, I think actually it'd be a really interesting thing to talk about. I, I think that's super common. I mean, I think like most chess players that are playing online are doing that. Just like looking yeah. at the engine, like right after the game. I mean, it's basically been incorporated into the interface almost, right? It's like it's like the chess.com and Lee chess interfaces are telling you mm-hmm. that that's what you are. I think they, they show you automatically like, oh, you missed this many wins and you made this yeah, They many give you mistakes. like a report when you finish your game. Yeah. I think automatically right. as well, maybe. Yeah, but, so um, yeah. that is kind of a problem. I mean, oh yeah, um, especially yeah. I've seen like students start looking at the report like while they're like they're they like just started analyzing the game with the coach, and then they're like okay. looking at the analysis like as they're <laughs> working with the coach, and that's yeah, yeah, yeah. I think very very troublesome um, yeah. because okay, I'm sure we agree on this point. Like the human insight into a game is more valuable than uh, the computer insight. Yes. Um, but uh, I guess, the, so where I would disagree on this is that I do think that the engine can be extremely useful if used in the right way. So I wouldn't go as too far as to say, like, just don't use the engine ever. Um, number one, I mean, I think that's just like Im- impossible to mandate. I think it's just too tempting for people to want to know like what the computer thinks now that it's so available. But really, actually, I do think that, you know, I mean, the engine can help reveal a lot of things, especially when I was like um, going through games, you know, when I was younger and like analyzing games and something would happen in the game that I didn't fully understand or a really obvious move wasn't played or wasn't mentioned in the notes. And I would, you know, I would just drive myself crazy. Like, why wasn't this move played or why wasn't this mentioned? And the only way to kind of confirm or, you know, um, uh, disconfirm, what am I trying to say? Refute what the move you're looking at is to kind of check with the engine and then it can really illuminate. And it sometimes it turns out the move you're thinking about is a blunder because of some tactic you didn't notice. And it's like, okay, well, yeah, I should have seen that. Or maybe it confirms your idea as being fully sound and you're like, oh, okay, so I'm not crazy. <laughs> this was like a normal move in the, in the position. So I think it can be useful, but only like in very, very specific ways. So that that to me is the danger. I mean, I understand that can be super satisfying psychologically. I understand that it's like driving you crazy, not knowing, but like in a chess game, you're also always in a state of not knowing, right? So might it not be better to just accept that you don't always know and be used to like not having the certain answer, but making your best answer. And at some point saying like, I think I've found a move that is a mistake in this book. You don't know for sure, but it's the same as like when you're playing a game, your opponent plays a move that you thought was wrong. You think about it seriously. You don't just pounce on it laughing gleefully. You think about it seriously and you're like, to my best estimation, after four minutes of my own reflection, I think this move is probably a mistake and I can do this. And I just have to move forward with that theory. So. Yeah. Yeah. uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead, Jesse. Well, I was just going to say, I think a lot of people think of me as anti-computer, but I I really want to stress the computer is a a beautiful thing. And one of the things that's happened in my lifetime, I'm such a boomer GM. I grew up before the computer was strong. And um, the thing that happened really was that it kind of was like everyone now has a free coach. It's one of, it's like, by all means, it's a coach for me as well. And the only thing I, I try to stress is like, view it through your own eyes first, like go over the game with your own eyes and then only after look at it with the computer. The computer will tell you amazing things. It will truly tell you, and you can think of it as another coach. Um, Absolutely. And of course you need to learn to work with it, but the same way you need to learn to work with a coach as well. (laughs) You know, like every coach you work with will have their own presuppositions and ideas and um, limitations and As a student, you kind of have to gain a sense of what those are anyway, you know, just as with the computer. 
Yeah, I would say when you're playing a game, like by the end of the game, you get some feedback, right? Because you're you're making moves that you think are best and are going to lead to winning the game. And either you're right on that and you win that game or you're wrong somewhere and your opponent kind of teaches you a lesson. They, they show you like why your ideas weren't good or maybe they just outplay you somewhere. I feel like that kind of feedback is very similar to what you get if you work with the engine, like Jesse was saying, where like you input your own thoughts first, then the engine gives you this instant feedback. Your idea is good, your idea is not good. And then hopefully, hopefully you kind of learn from that over time, you know, making the same mistakes enough or kind of finding a way for that to really stick with you in terms of like learning this, this new idea that you could have done. I think there there's the question of, are you going to understand how the computer beats you down? Um, and then also my fear with the computer is always that it's like a slippery slope. It's so psychologically satisfying that you just start using it more and more and more. Um, but so, so there has to be like a really strong case for using it for me, because I see such a great danger of people sliding into using it badly. Right. It would be like, if somebody told you like, you know, if you take this very, very, very tiny amount of cocaine, it can like help you be kind to people all day. And so you're like trying to be kind to people, but it's like, you have to be very careful <laughs> that, that you don't like lose everything right. to, to that. Um, so, but, but, but my question would be at, at what level and to what extent are people able to actually learn from that feedback that the computer gives them, right? Like if I'm rated 600 and I turn on the computer, do I understand how it beats down my idea? If I'm 1200, do I understand it? If I'm 1600, do I understand it? If I'm 1850, do I understand it? Like somewhere along the way, the percentage of the time that you understand why the computer is correcting an idea of yours, that percentage is increasing. Nobody understands it every time, right? Like, Hmm. You could put a game of yours into the computer right now, Jesse, as a grandmaster, and the computer would suggest some move that you wouldn't understand, right? I mean, that still happens. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, You're not I mean, going to understand every, every like reason why it prefers a move. Mm -hmm. So, and for somebody who's just starting out, they're not going to understand a single one of the computer suggestions, pretty much, unless it's like made in one. So along the way, that percentage is going from basically zero to at some point, you know, a strong professional grandmaster may be able to interpret correctly 95% of a computer's input and suggestions. Somewhere along the way, that percentage goes to 20% and 40% and 60% and mm -hmm. reaches a point where it might be useful and worth the risk of touching the drug. <laughs> but I honestly think that that percentage is really small until somebody's over like 2,000 feet A. And, and I wouldn't recommend it until 2,200 feet A because I think up till that point, it's not like you can't get by without it. And I think the risk is outweighing a fairly small benefit below that point. I understand in 1800, we'll occasionally have the computer point out like a three move tactic they didn't see. And then they'll say, okay, yeah, now I see that. I understand why this doesn't work. But how important was that lesson versus the risk, right? There's mm -hmm. a chance they could have found that on their own. And, um, and there's a chance that not finding it wouldn't have made that big a difference in their chess development. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it seems like it's really a question of whether people just learn to use the engine in very like limited and appropriate ways. And I feel like this is something that I've heard most coaches kind of agree with is that it's just like it has to be done after you think about the position with your own human brain. And even then, like just very limited because, yeah, I mean, the engine, it, it's so easy to misinterpret it and it's so easy to... um yeah, because there's okay. There's two issues. Number one, you're simply misinterpreting what the engine is saying, so you're not even getting the correct idea about the position. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe it's like, you know, one side played terribly in a strategic sense, but then they just had like a lucky tactic that won the game, and so suddenly you think like, oh, they they must have played well then because they were winning, um, which is definitely not necessarily the case. And then the other danger, of course, is that the computer kind of rots our ability to think for ourselves. So it's just, yeah, a lot of dangers with using the engine. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think um, definitely for me personally, uh, I don't really mention the engine until a student hits around uh, maybe 16 or 1800 over the board rating. And then even then I would say it's very limited. 
Um, but yeah, if they want to check their, you know, the engine after their game and they've already kind of thought about what they did wrong and they just want to see and they're very like mature about actually understanding what the engine is telling them, then I'm totally fine with it. I think it comes down to like their maturity more than anything. Jesse, how do you have your, your um, students use the engine? Oh, they all do it, dude. They all do it. Uh, you know, <laughs> I, know, but I, it, I, I mean, but they all maybe play bullet too. And in, in what capacity do you want them to use it? At what I point want, I want them system? to go over the game first, and then I want to Im- them to input their notes into something like a chess space file. I want uh, for students who aren't ready for chess space. I want chess.com or Lee chess to create some software that's easily accessible and easily understood for them to do so, to create a PGN file and then have a library of their games. That is the most important chess file that you'll have on your computer. And then only after have they put all that stuff in, can they look at like, say first, before even they look at the computer, see what other people played in the opening and then look at the computer. The computer will totally say everything you've done is wrong. You've got to prepare yourself for that. You will have, you will have formed judgments on the game of, of, of what was right and what was wrong. And what you'll see is like, even though the computer will tell you everything was wrong, there was a lot of moves the computer is going to say that neither you or your opponent was even on your horizon. So in a way they don't matter, right? In a way it really doesn't matter. You can say, Oh, I missed it. And it might seem obvious what the computer shows you, but in fact, it didn't matter, right? The nodes of the, the nodes of the game that were critical will be the ones that you identified in your analysis. That's one of the key things that if you just look at with a computer, you're not going to understand that. You know, you won't be able to see it with your own eyes and you'll never understand structures because you got to understand and dynamics within the structures. You got to do that over the board. The computer's not going to really show you the ideas, the position. 